Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at the wing spar. So very quick, I'm pretty sure you all know what a wing spar is, but basically it's a mean structure that consists of some type of big spar over here. This is one single spar with ribs and so on. Okay, so using an idealization, we're going to see how to study this. All right. All right, so let's first look at the idealized tapered wind spot. Okay, we're going to start by considering the simple case of two flanges and a panel or you want to call it a web okay so if i do a sketch basically what you're gonna have is what so let's say you're gonna have those two flanges over here this is the back two up over here one up Right, so let's say this is the part that is attached to the fuselage. So one flange is over here. This will be the second flange. And then in here will be a panel or web. Okay, so over here there's a panel or web. So let's say this will be. panel slash web this is the flange and this is the other flange all right so now let's start putting some dimensions so let's say that uh, the distance between the top over here, this one over here, so let's see. All right, so that distance here will be delta y sub 1. Obviously, in this case, on my picture, they are the same, but these two don't have to be the same. Okay, can be tapered different from the leading edge and from uh, the back edge. Okay, and all right, so a couple more things. Now, over here, we know will be a force on the flange. Let's call the top one P1. This will be P2. So this should have two components. Okay, so this will be the vertical will be PY2. And let's say this one will be PZ2. This one will have PZ1. P11, okay? And here the reference frame we're using basically is Y up. You see on the direction and then here. 
Uh, okay, I'm not going to do the white. So we'll be that way, we'll be. And the X is supposed to go in that direction. Okay. If I do it that way. Okay, so now the depth of this. will be H. Okay, and now forces acting over here. We probably have a shear force acting on the web, on the y direction, and a bending moment. Okay. That would be about with axis should be then about the X axis. Okay. All right, so all right. Just one more thing here is that this little angle over here, just for notation, alpha one, this little angle over here, alpha two. All right. So due to external loading, The wings bar section is subjected to a shear force Y and a bending moment MX. Okay, so now we're going to differentiate two cases. So the first one is that we're going to assume that all the uh, direct stresses basically due to bending would just be resisted by the two flanges. Okay. And the case two is that the, all the bending, uh, all, the, all the bending stress, all the stresses are resisted by the two flanges, but now also the panel can take some bending, not only shear. Okay. So we have two cases. So case one. Flanges resist all direct stress. Okay, and in this case, we'll be in what direction? Should be on the direction of the spar, so on the z direction. Okay, so in that case, what you're going to have is that PC1 will be equal to MX over H, and that PC2 will be equal to MX over H. Let me see which one will be. So, uh, let me see what will happen here. So, uh, okay, so that doesn't mean that correspond to this figure because if it correspond to this figure, actually, 
Okay, if I correspond to this figure, let's say this go up over here. If the bending goes this way, then which side should be in tension, which side should be in compression. So if it, so from figure here, but if this moment is in the opposite direction, you need to be careful. So in this case, PC1 here will be in, so from figure, it doesn't mean it's all the time the same case, this would be compression, and then this would be tension. Okay, but it's just because I did the moment counterclockwise. If you do it clockwise, this would be reverse. And since we know the sign convention for tension and compression is negative compression and positive tension. Okay? But again, this is not a formula valid all the time, it's just given the direction of the moment on the figure. That was case one, case two. So case two will be the panel or web is fully effective in resisting the direct stress sigma sub C. Okay, so in that case, what's going to happen is that the structure is going to be idealized as having a boom B1 and a boom B2, so that B C1. PC2 would be good. So this is a force, okay? So if the booms and the skin, so this is boom and so it will be, this is flange flange okay, then this is going to have some skin when we do the calculation and this is panel well, this is the idealization, okay? So in that case, we're gonna have this one will be equal to stress at one, stress at two can be tension and compression. Okay, so the force will be equal to the stress times the area. So it will be here B1, and this will be B2. Okay, where B1 and B2 are the booms area, okay, of flanges cross-section, to be specific. Okay, 
So that would be the only difference between case one and case two. And then now you proceed as on the following uh, procedure. So this would be the end. Let me do here, this here now. The the vertical components. Of, so we calculated PZ1, PZ2, now we need to find the vertical component P11, PY2, okay? And this time it's the same procedure for cases 1 and 2. Of P1, and P2 are obtained as Follows. Okay, so for that I need to do another figure. So the one we had P1 coming this way, I had This would be the PZ1 component of P1. And let's say this will be the PY1 component. Okay, and this angle over here is alpha 1. So basically the only thing I'm doing is zoom in if you want on that small area over here. Okay. So I need one more thing, this will be delta Z1, and this will be delta Y sub 1, okay? So from the figure, we're going to have that um, tangent. Alpha 1 is equal to what? Is equal to P y 1 over P z 1, which is equivalent to the basically change in high. Okay, for the change in length. Okay, so now this is very simple from trigonometry. So that you're gonna have what? P Y one be equal to what? P C one okay times tangent alpha one and this is the same thing as doing P Z one of delta Y one over delta Z1. Okay. Okay, and here be careful again because if we look over here, if we do this moment, this side would be what? This one would be in uh, tension, this one would be in compression, okay? So remember, really I put it this way, but really the P should be going in the other direction, no? Okay? So, this is really in compression. So if you want, you can add here the Negative sign. But again, this I'm doing the analysis by looking at this moment going up, okay? If it was going clockwise, all this will be reversed. Okay, and if I do the same thing for the lower one,
Okay, in this case, we'll have what? So we have P2. Let's say this would be PC2. This would be PY2. This would be alpha2. This would be here the delta y sub 2. And let's say this would be here. Oops, sorry. So let's 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 do it on top here. This would be the delta z two. So as before, in here we'll have tangent alpha two will be equal to p y two over pz2, which will be equivalent to delta y2 over delta z2. Okay, and same as before, so that py2 is equal to pz2 tangent alpha 2, which is equal to P Z2, delta Y sub 2, delta Z sub 2. Okay, and if I follow the same criteria, this would be intention, so really it should be like a positive sign over here, okay? But again, this is not always the case. Remember, this is just due because the way I did the figure over here, okay? That I did the moment counterclockwise. All right. Okay, so now that we know the two components PY1, PZ1, PZ2, PY2, okay, so let's say the actual loads on the flanges or in the flanges, so it should be what? We're gonna have P1 will be equal to P Y1 square plus P Z1 square. This would be the square root, okay? I mean, I don't think I need to do the figure, but let's just do it very quick. This is pure trigonometry. P Z1. This is P1, okay? Okay, so the magnitude of this, this distance equals the square, P1 square is equal to P1 1 square plus PZ1 square, okay? Okay, and similarly, we'll have that P2 will be equal to P Y2 square plus P Z2 square. Okay. All right, so maybe now, let me go to the next page, okay? Because I need to do a figure. And I don't wanna put it just in that little space.
All right, so now this is an important point. So the total shear force in the section is what? So we're going to have two components. Uh, let me do the figure first. So let's say we have the figure here. I might do it a little bit bigger now. All right, so we have our top flange over here. Oops, not good at all. And our second flange over here. All right, so over here, we have the shear force. We do here two things here. So we have the part of the shear force on the web or the panel. So PY web, which is, the, is here, okay? This is the panel of the web. But then you're also gonna have the components here of whatever is the vertical force in PY1 on this flange and whatever we had, the one going in this direction over here, okay? So, uh, I wasn't thinking here about the direction. So, let's see. Okay, so the top one we said was in compression, so actually it should be negative, right? So, so let's say we've been that direction, and then due to the moment, okay? And then this one right here will be in tension, so let's say we'll be going up. It will be PY2. Okay, so uh, basically you have one component that is first one, shear force in the panel slash web, which is V, Y, W. Okay, the first component. And the second one would be due to the vertical components of P1 and P2 which are basically are what the actual loads on the flanges. Okay. So again, uh, these are not equations that work all the time. You need to do the figure so that so that the total shear force. say VY would be equal to what? So in this case would be VY web minus PY1 plus PY2. Okay. All right, so now that the shear force is known, 
the shear flow in the funnel slash web can be determined. Okay, so now we need to go back to our two initial cases we had. For case one, which is what? PZ1 to what's basically equal to what plus minus MX over H. That was a simplification. Okay, remember in case one, the webs the web or the panel do not resist any direct stress. Okay. So in that case, what we're going to get actually is an average. I think I mentioned already in that case, Q sub shear basically is equal to what is equal to the force going on the web divided by the depth. Okay. And this should be some type of average value. So in this case, the shear flow, notice that, and that's why it's constant shear flow, is constant. Okay? So if I do, if I take here the idealized structure, all right, B1, B2, okay? You remember we only had the Vy over here and this is H the depth. So basically this is an assumption jelly done. The shear flow would just be the force going between V1 and V2 divided by the distance if you want, okay? So in this case, the you will assume that the shear flow distribution will be a constant value. So let's say you have to plot it, it will be this way and this will be the value here of QS. Okay. So now we need to go to case two. So for case two, which is what? In case two, the web is fully effective in uh, resisting also direct stress. So we had that PZ12 was equal to what? If you remember, was the value of the direct stress at 1, 2 times the area of the book. Okay? All right, so in that case, what do we have? A direct stress was given by, would be given by what? Mx times y divided by ix. So again, if I do here the ideal structure, v1, v2, Again, this will be, this one now is effective, okay? All right, so let me do, so let's say it would be the middle. So this is symmetric, okay? This will be Y over here, all right? So basically, in this example, I took MX to go that direction. Okay, so in this time, IXX will be equal to what? The moment created by this, I mean, the moment of inertia created by B1, B2, but also the one created by the web or the panel. Okay, but I'll show you that on an example. So in that case now, the shear distribution Q sub S 
throughout the panel will be equal to minus dy divided by ixx times the interval of ty ds. ds will be, let's say if you start from 1 to 2, this will be s over here. Okay? Because the skin is effective plus B1, Y1, because that's where you start. Okay, so the Y is the distance from the neutral axis. T, as I mentioned, is the thickness of panel slash web. And this time, shear flow will be in function of S, okay? So in this case, Shear flow is not constant throughout the thickness. Okay, so meaning what? Probably what we're going to have is that if we do a figure the way this should look like, doesn't mean it's going to look this way, okay, but It should look something like this, okay? But what you need to be careful is that, well, not careful, but for the understanding, is that this would be like the more realistic, but actually this area over here should actually be close and correspond to this one, okay? So what happened is that it will give you a correct average value, but it will not, will not be able to show what is the absolute maximum shear, okay, for the middle. All right, so now we're ready to go and do an example. So let me do the example on the next page. So continuous. Next page. Okay, so here is the example. So to save some time, I, uh, I did the pause and did it. So basically, this is our wings part over here with two flanges. Flange one, top and bottom. This is the web, the panel, and basically this is the dimension. So this is 200 millimeters. This is 400 millimeters. So imagine this is at the, at the fuselage. This is your wing, okay, if you want, that has two flanges one leading edge to the one at the back, at the, uh, at the opposite edge, okay? This is 200. There's a force over here applied of 20 kilonewtons. And what they ask is to find what is the shear flow distribution in this location here in this cut. Okay, so just right here, all right? And for this case, they ask you to determine the shear flow distribution in the panel at this section assuming the panel is fully effective in resisting bending stress. So what does that mean? Remember we had two cases, case one, case two. So case one, we say that is the panel here cannot resist any bending stress. So basically it's just resisting the shear in the panel, okay? But otherwise, if this can resist bending, okay, we say that case two, so basically, we know that we are in case two. And for case two, we had that P, C1, 
was equal to sigma z1 times v1 and v2 was equal to sigma z2 times v2 okay okay let me do a figure again so what we have what so it means we have here v1 v2 this is the idealized so this one is effective uh, so let me do here the neutral axis so what is the definition of the neutral axis the location where the bending stress is zero okay so let's say we'll be at the cut so that's what we need to do the calculations Okay, so let's see what happened at the cut. So we know that sigma z is equal to mx times y divided by ixx. Alright? Okay, so on the previous figure, I told you that the y will start from the neutral axis. And what is mx? So So that mx will be the moment created. See if we can do the figure. At this point, it will be 20 kilonewtons per force times the arm that will be one meter. Okay? So it will be 20 kilonewtons. times one meter. So basically that gives us that mx is equal to 20 kilonewton meters. All right, so that is the moment. So in this case, What would that mean? Okay. So if the force is going down, that means actually that's going to create a moment mx going what? Clockwise. And in that case, what will happen? If it goes down, this time the top will be in tension. And the lower part will be in compression. Okay. So actually, if you want sigma z1 here will be positive, sigma z2 will be negative. Okay, but before we do that, let's find what would be ixx. All right, so now be careful over here for the ixx. And this will be the page. Okay, and I x x over here. Will be equal to what? So we we'll have here. Let's say we we'll have an I x x. prime plus an i x x double prime okay so this will be the one due to flanges again the flange is the same thing as the booms Okay, 
and this one will be here due to panel slash web. Okay. So the one due to the let's first do I X X prime. So this one will be due to what? Will be just due to let's say B1. and B2, okay? So a general equation for this one will be summation I to one to infinity or two, okay? In this case would be two to N two B sub I Y sub I and Y sub I again is the distance from the neutral axis, all right? So this would be equal to B1 y1 squared plus b2 y2 squared. Okay, I forgot to put the square over here. Okay, in this case, n equal to. All right, so this will give us what? Will give us the, uh, I guess I forgot to give you something here on the uh, problem statement. Let me go back. Yeah, I forgot one thing on the problem statement, sorry for that, so let me go back. In this figure over here, I forgot to put that. We have B1, B2, so we have that B1 equals B2 is equal to 400. millimeter square and that the thickness T of the web panel is equal to two millimeters. Okay, from the idealist class, uh, from a structure one, you should have learned how to calculate B1, B2, okay? Here, I just give it to you to save some time. Sorry to forget that information. Okay, so now we can go back over here all right, and we need to be a bit careful. So let's see what we have. We're gonna have that B1 is equal to what? 400 times what? What would be Y sub one? So, uh, all right, let me do here another figure. Okay, quick figure, this is the cut. A, A. All right, this was 200. This is 400, so what will be the distance over here? Oops, sorry. The figure, this distance is 200, this one is 400, so at one, this was two meters. The cut was done right in the middle at one meter, so what should be the depth over here would be 300, okay? So in this case at the cut, that distance is 300 millimeters, so basically I have here 400 times what? Times uh, 150 square, okay? Plus again the same thing, plus 400 times 150 square. So we need to be careful here. So this will give you the I X X prime here will be equal to 18, 10 to the six millimeters to the fourth. So this will be the I X X for example that you will use if you were doing case one, because only the flanges will be effective, okay? But since in this case, also the web or the panel is effective, we need to take into consideration the second term. So in that case, we have I X X double prime will be equal to what? 
So this is equal to, again, we have the idealization over here. B1, B2, okay, but let's say this would be like a panel. All right, well, this would be the length would be 300, the depth would be 200, and the depth, this is like sideways, okay? We are this way, we're moving this way. And, and this will be 2 millimeters, okay? So what is the modern ratio of this uh, cross-section will be 112, the base, height to the cube, no? So for this, if you want, the mode of the of this cross-section is 112 of what? Base of A, B cube. You want this is B and this is A, okay? So in this case, we have exactly the same thing here, would be 112 of 2 times 300 to the cube, okay? And this is going to give us that I double prime X, X is equal to 4.5, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. Okay, so the total moment of inertia will be what? Ixx equal to Ixx prime plus Ixx dot prime will give us the Ixx is equal to 18 plus 4.5, so 22.5, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. Okay. So now that we have this information, we can calculate what will be the direct stress. Okay? So the direct bending stress sigma c would be what? So let's see. We have sigma z comma one would be equal to mx y sub one divided by Ixx. So we need to be careful here with the units because we had a uh, first, let's first decide that would be positive or negative. So we said the moment is going clockwise, so this is going to bend this way, so the top will be in tension, the bottom will be in compression. So we know that at one, this should be the value should be positive. Okay, and what was this? This was equal to Twenty kilonewtons meter. Now at the section AA, okay, the height is three hundred millimeters. So y sub one would be equal to one fifty. millimeters and here we know that Ixx is equal to 22.5 10 to 6 millimeters to the 4 okay and we know that this is in Tension, so that should be then positive, okay? All right, so let's do this calculation. 
but we need to be careful with the unit. So let's say this would be equal to then, um, let's move this one, so this would be 20 times, let's move that in Newtons, times 1,000, the meters to become millimeters, times 1,000. So now we can do this. Okay. And this is going to give that sigma Z1 is equal to 133.3 newtons per millimeter square. And it's positive, we leave it as positive because it's in tension, okay? Alright? So now we're going to do the same thing, but for what would be the stress and the boom. Two. And this should be page 51. All right, page 52. So now we do the same thing at Sigma Z2, we know this uh, will be in uh, compression. So let's say this would be equal to mx y sub 2 over ixx. So, same as before, we know this would be equal to 20 times. 1000 times 1000 this would be the same thing really should be minus 150 but let's say 150 let's just look at the sign by compression divided by the 22.5 10 to the 6 so this will give you that sigma z2 is equal to 133.3 newton millimeter square if you want really this is a minus sign here but it doesn't matter okay you won't put it now because I don't want you to think that the negative sign comes because of that I'm gonna put a negative sign just because it's in compression okay all right so because this is compression but Alright, so now that we got this, if we go back to the equation, now we can calculate what would be PZ1, PZ2. So now we go back to these two equations here. Alright. So let's say so that. PZ1. And PZ2 are equal to what? So it would be PZ1 is equal to sigma Z1 B1. So it's equal to 133.3 times 400. And we know this was in tension, so we can leave it positive 53, 320 newtons. And PZ2, we know is the one in compression. So same thing, but now minus 53,320 Newton Nerf. Okay. So next, we for a procedure. Oops. Next, the vertical components of P1 and P2 
but let's say let's say py1 and py2 will be easier will be equal to what so we had that py1 was equal to what easy one tangent alpha one okay and so now we're gonna have that p y2 is equal to p z2 tangent alpha 2 and we know this is equal to p z1 delta y sub 1 delta z sub 1 p z2 delta y sub 2 delta z sub 2 all right so let's do a figure to see exactly what could happen over here. So, so we had four over here, we have two over here. All right. And this, the cut the right in the middle. And here was the importance to do the middle line. Okay. Okay, so in this case, we know this is 400. So this is really 200. This is really 200. Okay? And now the delta y is that distance over here. Okay? So this is 200. And then on this side, we know this will be 200, so that means we are here 100. And here we are 100. Now the distance between let's say this point here and this point is 1000 millimeters. And the one here would be 2,000 meters. So basically it's one meter and two meters, okay? Okay. That's the Y, and this will also be here, the... Delta y. So basically, delta y would be the same here, would be the same thing here. Okay, this is a relation. Uh, then this would be this one or this one and so on. So basically, what I need to, we can, so basically, if this is 100, it should be here 50, no? One, from here to here. So at 150. Okay, right in the middle. So you have different options to do it over here. So in this case over here, the uh, delta y could be equal to what? So how much is it going down between here, the beginning and the end? What's the change in height? If you go from 200 to 100, that means that this will be 100. What is the total length? In this case, will be 2,000. Okay? Or well, otherwise, you could do what? This, if we do it correct, it should equal to what? Between, if you do it now from here to here, would be what? 150 to 100 would be 50. You are by what? This time the distance would be 1000. So you can choose which way to do it. Okay? All right? So basically your delta y over here is basically equal to, we we'll eliminate here two zeros, is one over 20. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. This is the delta y over delta z, okay? So this is y and this is here delta z over here. You can use either one. 
So then we have delta y of delta z equal to 1 over 20. All right, so that means that now I can go back to these equations. And find PY1 and PY2. Okay, so we're going to have PY1 would be equal to 53,320 times the change is low, which is 1 over 20. Okay, and this is going to give us that PY1 is equal to 2,000 666 Newton in tension. Okay, similarly, we can find PY2 is equal to 20 times 1 over 20 so this will give us PY2 equal to minus 2,666 newtons but this time this one will be in compression and that's why I added the negative sign All right, so the next thing to do is to find shear force in the wing spar section. Okay, so that's where we need to do the figure. Okay, so let's say this is at the section of the cut, A, A, all right. So what do we know here? Uh, we need to be careful here because here this is flange one, this is flange two. So when you look at this one here, this go this way and we know this is P1 which basically means that our PY1 here goes down, no? because it's positive in tension alright, so we're talking about this one here so this one should go actually in that direction here would be PY1 now similarly the one here in this end we'll be going this way so this time you're gonna hear the P Y2 will be going up here Okay, now let's say, let's assume a direction for this one here, which is the one we're trying to find, the V, Y of the web. Okay. So we need to find what is the value of the shear force throughout the web. Okay. So here there's two ways to do it. If you want 
both uh, will take you to the same uh, result, but it's like two different ways to look at the problems. First one is the one I like to do. So if you want a uh, first approach, So basically the way I like to do it is, is that one needs to happen in the structure. The structure is going to have some external force, which in this case is what? Is the force at the end of the beam, which will be constant, the shear will be constant throughout the whole length, okay? So if I needed to plot it, let's say I could plot it here. Could do it up or down, but let's say it will be my shear force really is equal to what to my external force, which is equal to the minus 20 kilonewtons. Okay, it's this one over here, so that's the external. Okay, so now what I do is F external equal to the internal forces, so that force needs to be resisted by the internal actions in the structure, which will be those three forces. So if I do it this way, what do we get? We get that V over here, which is minus 20, should be equal to what? To V Y web minus P Y1 plus P Y2. Okay? So now this will give us that the shear force on the web will be equal to V plus P Y one minus P Y two. So let me do it over here. I will not space. So this should be equal to what? Minus twenty kilonewtons. So let's transform that into newtons since those for say newtons. So that will be minus twenty thousand. Then P Y one is 2,661 plus 2,666, uh, 2, sorry, and PY2 in compression is negative, so minus, minus 2,666. So now you see here, this will give us that, This will give us that Vy web will be equal to minus fourteen thousand six hundred and sixty eight newtons. Okay, the second approach, generally you like it more because it's just 100% mathematical. That one is basically just based on summation of forces equal to zero. So basically we have the similar figure. Let me just copy it here. Okay, I don't know how much I'm going here, so this would be, let's say, from here to here. Okay, so on this one, we kind of have the same thing here. B Y web B Y sub one B Y sub two, but this time if you want we can put the force here. Our V, which is the twenty kilonewtons, okay, which is going down. 
So this will be all this will be internal. Okay. And this is really your external, but we don't use that. So if you do summation of forces equal to zero, what would that give you? Minus V minus P Y one plus V Y one plus P Y two equal to zero. So this will give you that V Y one will be equal to what? V Okay, but this is, sorry, this is minus 20, this is going down. Okay, so we go to V plus P11 minus P12, which basically is the same as that we had before. Same equation that we had over here. So this again will give you minus 20,000 plus 2666 minus minus 2666 will give you that V Y web equal to minus 14,668 newtons. Okay, so now that we have the shear force, we can find what would be the shear flow distribution in the web. So the shear flow distribution in the panel slash web is given by the equation that I gave you before Q of S, function of S is equal to minus V Y web over I X X now we have the first thing which is the effect on the web Y T D S this is whatever is happening on the web panel slash web plus the B sub I Y sub I and that's the influence from the lunges. Okay, so let me do a little figure over here again. So imagine we have here B1, B2, so we know that in the middle we have the neutral axis, this is the origin for the Y, and now let's say that we start from 1 to 2, so this will be the origin for the S, and now we know the whole thing here is is 300 so that means that each one will be 150 so 150 150 
Okay, maybe I'm doing too much on that figure. Let me add maybe another one quick over here. I don't want to put anything on the same figure, B1, B2. We know the thickness here is 2 millimeters. B1 equal 400 and B2 equal 400 as well. So this represents the flange. Flange 1, flange 2, and this represents the panel slash web. Alright, so now substituting to the above equation, so substituting into Q sub S equation. What do we have? Q twenty one and two S will be equal to VY which is minus or minus fourteen six six eight divided by IXX which was equal to twenty two point five ten to the six. Now we need to integrate this over here, so integral of y, so we need to be careful here with y, y will be, what is that distance? Okay, so it will be symmetric, so if we do from here to here, we'll have 150 minus s, okay, so that distance here, this is y, So this is y, okay? y in function of s would be what? 150 minus s. So when y is 0, this means when s is 150, y is 0, okay? So when s is 150, y is 0. And then it keeps increasing. Now times t, which is 2 millimeters, ds so now we start from 1 so we need to do b1 y sub 1 which is what 400 times 150 and we can close the bracket so this will be here b1 this will be b sub 1 and this term over here is T. So if we do the numerical calculation, we get that Q12 of S is equal to 6.52 10 to the minus 4 times minus S square plus 300S plus 60,000. Okay. So if we substitute, we have Q12 at zero, will give you 39.14, and then the maximum value will be Q12 at 150, is equal to 53.8. So basically that means that the distribution, okay, this is the web, let's say this will be the flanges, one here, one here at the cut, would be 39.14 over here. Okay, all the way to the middle, this is our neutral axis. All right, and then from here to here, we'll have 53.8, and then just by symmetry, we do it again. This would be going this way, 
then it's only by this one. So this would be here the the shear flow distribution at the section AA. Okay? So I'll show you very quick, but I, I will be doing that on the following video. To check with final element, you see about 53.8 and it's uh, not constant. So this is the whole thing. All right, so over here, you see this is not uniform. Oops, sorry, F5, criteria. And basically you see the values, about 39.1 force will go from 40, 40 to in the middle about 50s. Again, this value will be more accurate if we refine the mesh over here. But uh, I will show this on the following video. So that will be all for this uh, video over here.